planetary industry is something I wish I had gotten into sooner inside of EVE Online. And by the end of this video, we're going to show you how to set up a system in HiSec that's approachable for new players and veterans alike that you can use to make an extra couple hundred million ISK this month. I know, I'm excited too. So if you want the best EVE Online guides, you came to the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Loru here, digital advertiser, content creator, and Eve enjoyer for the better part of 10 years now. And there's gonna be a lot of information in this video, but stick with me. Bookmark the video, come back to it. We're gonna have timestamps down in the description for you too. So you can snap to whatever it is you need. So let's not waste any more time, shall we? As with everything in Eve, PI starts with what skills you have. Now there's two skills that stand above the rest, command center upgrades and interplanetary consolidation. Now you don't wanna start any any kind of PI until you have at least command center upgrades to five. We're gonna explain why in just a sec. You also want to get interplanetary consolidation to at least four. And let's just give a simple summation of these. Command center upgrades let you put more stuff on planet, letting you get more out of the limited planetary resources you have. Interplanetary consolidation lets you have more planets. You start with two and then each one of these gives you another one. Planetology and then advanced planetology are going to let you scan those planets and see what kind of resources are on planet and where they are. And remote sensing is going going to let you scan planets from a distance. The higher the rank of remote sensing, the further away you can scan stuff down. So once you get command center upgrades to five, interplanetary consolidation to four, and remote sensing planetology and advanced planetology to at least three and four. Now you can get these skill books from any market hub like Jitta. What you want to look for is the expiry date right here. Anything that is above 90 days or anything that looks like it's around a year, these are NPC sellers. These are not players that is part of the game that seeds the market with these. So if you're in Jeddah, you might be able to buy these books, but for a little bit more than 500k a piece, make sure you're checking to see where the NPC sellers are. And if they're close enough to you, just go buy them from the NPC sellers to save you some cost. So once you get your skill books training, how the heck do you start PI? Well, like everything inside of EVE, you're going to come over to the activities and go to the agency tab, come on down to resource harvesting. And then from there, press planetary industry, press planetary industry. So that five times fast. From there, you're going to be able to scan down certain systems around you. With higher ranks of remote sensing, you can scan further out. You can filter by distance, filter by security, and by planet type. This is going to come in handy later. But for now, let's focus on this system I got here. Now, none of my PI is actually inside of this area. We're just using this as like a test for you to show you off how high sec is. There's a couple different ways you can set this up, but follow me. When you're brand new to PI, we're going to focus on what's available versus what's efficient. There's a billion setups about how to make zero to P3s in one system, all this other stuff. We're going to focus on advanced factories in future videos. For this first video, let's just get your feet wet and have you go practice. And yes, we're going to be making T1s. T1s, T2, P0, what the heck does it mean? Enter in our first third-party tool that we're going to be checking out, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the link will be in the description, but this is simply a PI Eve helper that helps to visualize all the various things that you can make with PI. Now, each one of these columns represents a tier with this being zero, this being one, this being two, three, and then four. As you go down, down the chain, stuff gets more expensive. Let me give you an example of that. And the prices you see here are live prices inside of Jitta, so you can trust the prices that you see. You can see the most expensive P0. Looks like it's this Felsic Magma right here at 9.4. If I mouse over this guy, Felsic Magma, you can kind of see down here, the average ISK per M3 is 695, and you could sell each individual item for 9.4 ISK. Now, this is the number you're actually going to want to look at because depending on your hauling skill, Stuff is going to be less or more lucrative depending on what you have access to. We're going to give you a full epithal fit in this video with future bigger ships coming in other videos. So we see that the magma is sold for about 700 ISK per M3, but we can use this magma to make silicon. And you can see that silicon is 2,000 ISK per M3, literally triple what the Felsic magma is worth. And this is your first big thing to understand with PI. You're essentially trading time for more lucrative assets as you go down this chain. If we look a little further, silicon can be used to make these three things, with silicate glass coming in at 8.7 thousand ISK per M3, microfiber is 8.3, miniature electronics, dare I say, over 9 thousand ISK per M3. Now, just for this video, let's focus on making P1s. So for the next step here, you're gonna wanna open up this web page because we're gonna alt tab in between Eve and this to be able to see what kinds of things we can make. So we see in the system that we found, we have lava, barren planets, oceanics, but we have a lot of barren and oceanics and only one lava planet. So let's come over to this dock here 
and we're gonna unfilter everything but Baron and Oceanic so we can see the kinds of things that we can make in system. You really don't wanna be gating your Epithal no matter where you are. It makes you super susceptible to ganks and I recommend not doing that. You wanna be confined to your system and see what you can make in system, especially in high sec. Those high sec gankers are looking for people like you. So we can see that with these two planets, we are able to make everything up to P3, transactional micro, brr, these transcranial things that I can't pronounce, and vaccines. Now, as you follow this guide, in order to future-proof yourself with the guys that I've got coming out, you want to pick items that are plentiful first, not just follow the stuff that I make exactly. In the system near you, you might see there's a bunch of barren and storm planets or barren and gas planets. Choose whatever is plentiful near you and don't just copy whatever the heck I'm doing. Once you pick a system and see what's plentiful in terms of planet types, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to go make some test cultures. I have a barren and an ocean planet. I can make test cultures. Just because these planets have the option of making these resources doesn't mean that planet has enough of those resources. I know this gets complex fast. Here's all you're going to do. Open up your agency tab, find a system, filter to the planets that you can make stuff on, come back to EVE Online, and we're going to right-click this planet and press View Planetary Industry. And once you press View Planetary Industry, you should see an empty planet like this. And you got this filter in the top left here. What we're looking for are these red and white circles here. And you can find them by moving this dial. The left side of this dial is more deep and won't be as efficient for you to extract. Read slower to extract the items. And to the right is more plentiful and on the surface. So you want to put this right to where you start seeing some red and white dots and see how plentiful this resource is on this planet. So let's start from the top here. I'm going to click aqueous liquids here. And we can see that there's really one patch on the top, some on the bottom, but it's all really green and yellow. And we see that the density is only 14% if I mouse over this. You can see in this bar chart up here that aqueous liquids is the least on this planet. Noble metals too is pretty low, so we're not going to choose that. It's going to be one of these three, base metals, carbon compounds, or microorganisms. So we see microorganisms has this really big patch in the center of the, of the planet here. Carbon compounds has some stuff all over the place. Carbon compounds has some stuff all over the place, but not really seeing any big patches. Base metals is a similar situation. There's one patch, but there really isn't a lot going on, all things considered. So maybe we go for microorganisms for this first one. So we've decided that we're going to get microorganisms out of this first planet. So since we've decided we're going to get microorganisms out of this first planet, that means we're going to be making bacteria on this first planet. Now, what you can do with this tool is if you click an item, it's going to show what the output goes to. If you actually click the picture, it's going to open up the Fuzzworks market chart for you. This is going to show you how expensive or cheap stuff is. But here's an advanced tip for you. If you mouse over something and press I, it's going to snap the inputs of those materials. If you mouse over something and press O, it's going to show the outputs of that material. You can mouse over them again and keep clicking them, just to be able to test and filter. If you're pressing I and O and it's not going away, you can just refresh the page and it goes back to normal. So since we see we're going to be making bacteria on this first planet, we see we can make these four things from this one planet. We'll go more into these in a future video. For now, let's just be happy with the bacteria. All right, so we got our first planet is going to be the number three planet here. Just because I want to show you a little bit of different stuff, let's check this eighth planet here, this oceanic planet. You can see there's a crap ton of aqueous liquids all over the planet. The density is 46. And we see a lot of these little patches on the south side of the planet. Maybe we're going to set up right here. Now we come back to our chart here, and I know that test cultures actually require bacteria and water, and water takes aqueous liquids. So follow me here. We know that that first planet we're going to make stuff on has a lot of complex organisms that will make bacteria, and this planet has a lot of aqueous liquids that are going to make water. Those two combined are then going to be able to make test cultures. So to future-proof myself, I'm not going to come to this planet and make more microorganisms. I'm going to make water on this second planet and bacteria on the first planet so that if I want to craft more advanced stuff down the line, I have the option to do so. So planet eight and planet three are where we're going to set up. Once you've found the spot, you need to get yourself an epithal. Epithals are specific to planetary industry and the higher Galente hauler skill you have, the more planetary commodity hold you're going to have. This is huge because while stuff isn't super heavy, it does add up when you talk about tens of thousands of things. With Galente hauler rank five, I am looking at a solid 67,000 M3. And the best part is the epithal also comes with a command center hold. Yes, once you locate those planets, you have to buy a corresponding command center for that planet. So we found one oceanic and one barren planet, so that's why we bought one of each. Now, where to get these is very similar to the skill book in that you want to look for NPC sellers on the expiry section right here. Now, each one of these is going to weigh a thousand M3. So you can't just take any old hauler to get it. I recommend getting the epithal first and then getting your command centers. We're not going to be going super into the fit. You just need to know a couple key points. First, with your multi-spectrum shield hardener, you're going to 
going to get a solid 17k EHP, but you're not going to be fighting mobs with this. The only way you're going to get killed in high sec is if there's a ganker coming to get you. That's why we've got the warp core equalizer here. This is going to make it so if somebody locks down, you can warp off. And we've got three inertia stabilizer twos. This is going to put your align time to sub six seconds, just barely, coupled with the low friction nozzle joints in the rigs. This gives you a solid three server ticks. And honestly, this is as fast as I could get the align time to be, but the skills are pretty tight. So if y'alls aren't there, that's okay. Just fit some more tank in the lows instead. The final thing we got for y'all is a nice cloak in the highs. We're going to show you why in just a sec. And before I go any further, we've got something special for you. Now, y'all know that I'm an EVE partner. That means we get stuff to give to you. But to really help out the people during this lovely PI guide, what I'm going to do is give a couple of you a fully fitted epithal with some command centers inside the cargo hold with all the skill books you need really think of it like a PI starter pack. It's my gift to you, y'all. We're all about generosity here on the Loru Gaming channel. So in order to win this video, you got to do these three things. The first thing is you got to be subscribed to the channel. My bot's going to know if you're not subbed and you'll be disqualified. Second thing is you got to go into the comments and type, I want some pie. Everybody likes pie, right? And the third thing you got to do in that same comment is put your Eve in-game name. I got to know who I'm going to send the starter pack to. You do those three things and you'll be eligible to win. We announce the winners in our YouTube channel community section and in our Discord. So come on down to those and you'll be able to see if you've won. I'm super excited to be able to give back to y'all. PI is one of those things I really wish I got started sooner. Looking forward to helping y'all get started as soon as possible. So since you're following along, you've found a system that works for you. You've looked at the planets. You've seen what those planets can make you. You fit your epithal. You've got in your epithal's command center hold some command centers you need and you're ready to start PIing. Now you can do most of your PI actually from in station. There's two things you have to do out of station and that's place your command center and actually access the customs office to get your items out of the planet. Now, in order to get to this screen here, you're going to open up your Neocom, come down to industry, press planetary industry. You can right click this guy and add shortcut to add it to your left hand bar. You're going to be using this screen more than you're going to be using the actual agency. Let me close that out and keep us going. Now, we've got some test planets here already. These are for future videos. Let's go make two new colonies to show you from start to finish how this goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to undock and we're going to head to those planets. All right, so once you're in the area that you want to establish your PI bases in, you're going to want to warp to a safe spot. And we talk about how to make these in other videos. But suffice it to say, while you're mid-warp like this, you're going to press Control B and then press Enter when you see your cursor in between point A and point B. This is going to make a point in space that only you can get to. Now, you can be combat scanned down by somebody with combat probes, but this is why we brought the cloak. Once you're cloaked, nobody can find you, nobody can bother you. So you're in your safe point. You've opened up your planetary industry menu. So we know we want to go to planet three. So let's right click planet three here and press view planetary industry. And we're going to go to build. Now you can place your command center really anywhere you want to. It really doesn't matter where you place it, just put it anywhere. The second thing you're going to do is left click that command center, come down to this upgrade window, and you're going to upgrade it to level five. Now this is going to cost you about six million isk. And I know the new bros watching this. So like lower one planet already, six billion isk. Epithal, scale books. Take it from me. You get this system set up. It's going to cost you some some initial income, but then you have a system that makes you hundreds of millions of isk every month in perpetuity per character. Yes, we will have multi-box guides coming, don't you worry. Now, for now, that's all you're going to do on this first planet. And you can see that we have industrial activity right here. Let's go to the second planet now. I believe he said that was planet eight. Let's right click this guy, go to view planetary industry. And same deal, we're going to build our oceanic command center. Really doesn't matter where, where we put it. This looks like a fun place to live. I would like that. Let's upgrade that to level five as well. Press submit and there it is. We now have our two planets ready to, ready to go. You can now dock up. You don't want to be caught in space setting up all your links and planets. Just trust me. All right, we're all docked up and safe. So let's actually make some PI now, shall we? And for those of you that have come this far in the video, good job. I know it's complicated. I know there's a lot, but it is worth it. Trust me. Let me show you what I mean. In the about week and a half that I've been doing PI on this character with only three planets while testing layouts, a bunch of my stuff has not been like super optimal. We've gotten seven 73 million isk. This is in two weeks. So here's where the real fun begins when it comes to PI. Now, this is going to be something like what your planet's going to look like. And I wanted to show you a fully built one before.
before we actually make one from scratch to talk about the most important thing for this first video. Remember, our goal is to make P1s. And how we're gonna do that is like this. This extractor has these nodes. These nodes pull resources from out of the ground back to the extractor. Those resources then get routed into all these factories. These factories take the P0 and turn them into P1. That P1 is then put in the launch pad to go from the planet to the customs office. We can then pull it out of the customs office in space. So the goal of this video is to get P0 to craft into P1 into your hangar to make some misc. Okay, sound good? Now, before we go any further, there's a couple numbers you really have to focus on. Now, they're housed in our extractor inside of the actual extractor program. Now, I know a lot of stuff just popped up on the screen. Just give me a sec. Inside of your extractor's program, there's three things you want to focus on. The duration of your program, the average per hour, and the total resources got. You can take your program duration and make it up to two weeks. But as you can see, the efficiency is going to go down. That's what this center bar is here. You're encouraged to sign in at least once a day. We're going to talk about the best efficiency you can have in future videos. Typically, what I do is set my stuff to run two days. If we set it to a day, we can see our average per hour is 15k with a total of 400,000 units. Veteran PI players saw that and went, Ugh, that's not a lot. They're right because of a couple reasons. Efficiency of your planets really all comes down to what the the hourly rate of your extractors are getting. So our extractor program says we're getting an average of about 14 and a half K per hour. We want to be able to set up enough factories to be able to fully utilize that number and not really have any waste. And this is the entire PI game right here. On each planet, you have a set amount of CPU and power grid. The more extractors you have, the less factories you can use. The more factories you have, the less extractors you can use. So you want to find that balance between how much can you get off planet versus how much can you craft from those materials. So here's how to do it. We're on our new planet with nothing here. I think we said we were going to go get some microorganisms. We have a big spot here. So let's build our barren extractor control unit right on this. Now you want to kind of notice where the materials are right now. I'm not going to build our barren extractor down here because there's really not a lot of stuff in this like center yellow band. It's all kind of up here towards the north of the planet, right? That means that the bulk of the materials are going to be in this band typically and in this band typically as well. We're going to put our extractor right about here to be sure that we can get at future resources. These hot spots move. You want to future proof what's going. Now we have to press submit to build the extractor. We click on this extractor. And now what I want you to do is follow me step by step what we're going to do. We're going to make it easy for you. Left click on the extractor and then left click install extraction program and everything just went away. It's fine. We're going to click on microorganisms and set this to whatever you want to set it to. I tend to set my stuff to two days. We're going to left click these to install all of these extractors themselves, you're going to see that each one of these takes power and CPU. Now they appear in this radial pattern, but you can mouse over this and drag. I'm going to move this right here so y'all can see it. You can see how this number right here is going to go up and down depending on where I drag this to, eh? The higher the number, the better. So where do you put all these then? There's this big hotspot here. Do I just throw these in here willy nilly and call it a day? No. You're going to click scan and go to microorganisms and you're going to drag this up and down to try to find where this like originates. Where does this hotspot originate from? Right about there. We're going to make a base pattern here that's going to try to get as much of the starting point as possible. Now you can see if I put these two close, see how all of a sudden there's negative ones over there? If you overlap these extractors, your efficiency goes down. So what you're going to do is try to get these as close as possible without getting some negatives. Now that we're covering the bulk of that eye, we're going to make our scan a little bit bigger and we can see that the majority of the surface area that's white is going to be on top here. So we're going to keep moving up here first before we move down below. All right, let's keep dragging these and keep moving our scan. Okay, now we see it's kind of going down to the left. So let's start dragging these down to the left. And you want to get this as tight as possible to really maximize your stuff there. Okay, now that we've got this in a nice pattern, you're not going to press start extraction yet. You're going to kind of come over here and QA these. We say we got a 200 smack dab in the center of this eye, but here's a 173. So why leave that one there and we can see if we get more up here. We're up to 174, 168, not over there. Here we go. It's down to 180. Excellent. So just by being able to move that around, you optimize your stuff just a little bit. The nice looking pattern. We can see our average per hour is 41. Very excellent. We're going to press start extraction. Now, once you press start, it's not actually running. Any changes you make in PI, you've seen me press the submit button. All of your changes are not live until you press submit. That submit functionality is really useful. 
it's gonna let you play with PI without actually interrupting your live extractor, live factories. So make sure if you wanna test stuff, you don't submit it, you can play around with it and then press cancel and all of your stuff is not published to production. Where are my programmers at, huh? Now you're gonna see that there's a red circle around this. If we back out to our main screen here, it's extracting microorganisms, but there's a problem. One or more facilities requires attention. If you see this red, that means you gotta go in there and see what the heck's the problem. We can see it says not routed. Now we have to actually get a couple base things going here. And shout out to Jake Lee, an absolute titan of EVE Online for showing me how to make this setup. Definitely go follow his guides. Thanks very much, Jake. What we're gonna do right next to this sucker is you're gonna place a storage facility, that's from the build menu, and a launch pad. You're gonna get these as close as possible to each other because the further stuff is away in relation to other stuff on your PI planet, it's gonna cost more CPU and power grid. And we're really gonna min-max this so you don't wanna have stuff all kind of spread out. Once you place these down, you're gonna create a link. By left-clicking this, you can see this is now highlighted. Left-click your extractor. You can see now we have this like link that's right here. And check out the CPU increase and the distance as you keep going down. That's what I was just talking about. Now we're gonna left-click the storage bin. You can see there's like a yellow dotted line that's in between there. We're gonna left-click the storage bin again and come to the launch pad. Now we see we have these links created. You're gonna press submit. Cost me a little bit over a million-esque. Now those links are created, but the extractor still needs to be told where you're gonna put those materials. Nothing automatically knows where to put stuff. You're gonna click on products. You're gonna double click microorganisms and you're gonna click on the storage bay, create route. You see it had a nice little animation there and then press submit. Now this planet is green. We are now extracting out microorganisms. They're going into a storage bin. The storage bin is 12 km3. That'll take many days to fill up. We're not going to stop at P0. That's the microorganisms. We're going to get P1. This is where the factories come in. You're going to take these basic factories and you're going to place these in such a pattern like so, getting sure these are nice and close. Now, how you organize these really doesn't matter as long as everything's super close and you've minimized your CPU from your links. We got this nice looking pattern here. Once you place these, press submit. That's going to commit the factories to getting put down. A little bit of a fee there, whatever you place the factories. Now you're going to make your links. Same deal. You're just going to kind of make these links as close as possible. All right. Everything's got a link we can see and press submit. Now, just like the extractor has to be told where to extract and where to send those products, the factories need to be told what they're making, where the input is coming from and where they're gonna send the output to. So we know we're extracting microorganisms to make bacteria. You can always refer to this third party tool and mouse over stuff and go, which one is this make again? I'm not really sure. Ah, uh, microorganisms make bacteria. So with this factory selected, we're gonna go to the schematics tab, click bacteria, click install, and then you're gonna click the launch pad because it wants to know where to send, where to route the bacteria to. Press create route. Now, if I X out of this, you can see the factory has both an orange and a red circle. The output is set up, but the input is not set up. You're actually gonna have to wait to do the input until we have products in your storage bin. You can see our next cycle is gonna be done in 24 minutes until we have any microorganisms in our storage bin. So what we're gonna do in the meantime is you're gonna set up all your factories like this on all your planets. I told you this was gonna be fun. You're gonna go down the line and set all these up. How I like to do it is I go, is I talk to myself because I'm super ADD. That way I could tell myself what the actual process is. So factory, install, launch pad, create. Factory, install, launch pad, create. Install, launch pad create. Yes, this is the tedious part, but once you kind of get a rhythm going, it becomes very easy. You can see the factory snaps to the bacteria. Once you do that, make sure you press submit. Now these factories are ready from an output standpoint. What I recommend you do if this is your first time doing PI is go set up all your planets with an extractor, with its factories, get the links and the routes going, and then leave. Go make yourself a sandwich, go make lunch. You can even come back the next day if you want to. So while that one's cooking, I'm going to go make this oceanic planet. Now I'm going to fast forward through this and come back to y'all when I'm done, okay? All right, we got my second planet all sorted. We are extracting aqueous liquids. We are ready to craft some water. Our outputs have been set up and our routes, we're just waiting on that input. So you're probably gonna see something like this on all five of your planets when you get started. And I would literally just come back the next day or come back that evening. That way you have plenty of resources to work with. I'm on a different planet set up here to show y'all how to get the input going. This is a factory that's making bacteria. It's missing microorganisms. Once the extractor puts your materials into the storage bin, you're gonna access those from the storage section. You're going to click microorganisms, press create route, and click on the factory. Then finalize it by pressing create route again. And when you press create route, you're going to see it have this like ping animation once you press submit. That is now ready to go. And you can see that this is now in production. We have input 3,000 microorganisms. This is
is now making stuff. Now let's show you how to get stuff out of the launch pad. Once you undock, you can stop ship, right click this, customs office, access customs office, and you can see we've got a little bit of materials ready to go. And right click that same thing, customs office, warp two at zero. You're gonna have to be at the customs office, actually pull out your inventory. So from the actual launch pad itself, we're gonna pull this into the customs office, and this is where the monetary sync comes in. Depending on where you are in space, there's going to be a tax rate, especially if you're in high sec. Where I am, it's about 10%. Once you press transfer, it's going to pull the money out of your account. Now we're going to take those reactive metals, throw them into our planetary commodities hold. Once you get your stuff into the planetary commodities hold, head back to base and deposit it at station. While we're on the subject of hauling, let's talk about some efficiencies here. You can see that the launch pad only holds 10K M3, but the customs office holds 35. So remember I said there's two things you can do from space, place your command centers and interact with the customs office. So if you don't want to go get your stuff today, but the launch pad is full, what you can do is undock, drag and drop the stuff from space, from the launch pad into the customs office, press transfer, and then dock back up. You don't have to actually go haul it until the customs office is full. What this ends up meaning with the setups that I've been showing you today is I really only have to haul once or twice a week. It's not something that I do every day. What I do every day is come in and mess with my extractors. This video was long enough, so we're gonna save all the other efficiencies and how you can audit this for the next video. In the next one, we're gonna show you how to take your P1s and turn them into P2s. And if you want the full PI guide, that's gonna be right here. We're gonna break down how you can go from hundreds of millions of ISK, yes, to billions of ISK a month per character, baby. If you want more EVE Online guides, sub right here. Thanks very much, everybody. Don't forget to enter the contest. We'll see you in the next video.